Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friendly neighborhood Dragon Slayer presenting to you another commentary. This time we're going to be discussing the ranked battle as you're going to see before you. Um, but yeah, I've got a tasty beverage. As you can see, the uh, runtime of this video is a little bit longer than our normal videos. But I want to showcase two examples of um, the new ranked because I believe it's a, a very valid point that we need to take into consideration. Wargaming wants us to believe that 10v10 battles will take longer to do. That I very much do not believe. I very much believe that 10v10 battles finish up much faster and um, really disadvantage light tanks and artillery, of which I'm sure most of you are like, hmm, whatever, artillery, nice if it's not in the game. Which, um, surprisingly, we have one on each team. It's kind of different right now. But uh, this was also their first division, so there were still a few folks, you know, crazy enough to try it, not realizing you can't get that uh, stun damage you used to. So here we're going to see the kind of new meta. We're going to see the, the, the Carnivarns, uh, S STRVs, STBs uh, that have made up the new meta because uh, holdowns are kings. So you're, you know, you're super conks. Everything's kind of revolving around that meta right now. Also, I don't know if you've realized this, but if you lose one tank, you're more or less done. Um, so I think that 10v10 encourages new thoughts, new ways of playing. You can play the maps differently, um, but it really makes you lose faster. If you lose a tank, you're done. It, it's just that simple. Now it's 9 versus 10, and if you're all focus firing and doing your job, it should be over pretty quick. Look at this grill. This grill's a prime example of why... Um, losing a tank early on is, is so painful um, also this is painful look at this uh, he doesn't do enough wait wait for the JP where he hits me is just precious um, but another thing is raffle stomping if in, in ranked you all ten of you need to go one side and that's what the meta has become it's become a massive massive limbing train and it, and it used to be like that before you know the guy hit me in the commander's hatch. In the commander's hatch. He got the tiniest sliver of the only spot he could pen. Granted, a JP can actually pen a Karn's front of his turret if it if we're facing each other flat. So I, I wasn't too set I wasn't too upset. I knew that was gonna happen. So this JP does make a very fundamental mistake here in a second. Um, but because he's you know giving me the side, and then look at this super con. Like we're just we're just losing. I mean, we're not losing. They're losing tanks. They lost three tanks for, I mean, what, the V4 got banged up pretty bad and I got hit. But it, it, it just feels like this season of ranked is not what it should be. Now, I'm having a great, I had a great time. I think I did qualifiers over two days, Division One over two days, Division Two on two days, and then because I live on the wild side, I did Division Three in one day. I think I did like two or three hours, you know, cron it. STB, STRV. Uh, one of the STRV uh, ones I got towards the end will be the second video in today's selection. Because, as you can see, um, these battles are not quick. I mean, Wargaming said I w they want to elongate the battles. They're right. If the two teams don't encounter each other and go choose the same direction to push, the battles will last longer. However, if you encounter each other... All right, so let's let's talk about thoughts and how we play maps um, like we usually do. So, Kron, great hold down tank, uh, great help work, works working on ridges. Um, yeah, there's not much selection on where to go. You go zero line, you go fight it. Now, this is where uh, some map knowledge comes in key. Every tank is lit, and um, I'm controlling the the right now. I'm controlling the mini map um, when I recorded this, so I had forgotten to zoom in and watch this, but. I was trying to look around and show you guys the rest of the map. I mean, they tried pushing through. They, they tried pushing hard, um, and they crossed the open, and that's always a no-no. Never cross 300 meters of open ground. I say that all the time in my platoons. Like, I hate if I have to cross 300 meters of open ground. It's like, why? Because I'm just going to get spanked. You, you're asking for a tank destroyer to light you up two or three times and keep you lit, and then there's a... I'm going to upload a T100 game here shortly where I watch an E5 cross the open and go from healthy to dead. 
and he didn't have to. So it's it's that thought. Look at this 430. He's just crossing the open. And I pop him in the track. Watch him spin. He didn't have to cross the open like that. Like, I... I appreciate the fact that they were trying to win. We were really close. That STRV, if he would have moved up or moved to the central ridge or progressed any which way in this game to be more of a benefit to his team, we could have lost. I mean, because I would have been punished for my decisions. But as we see here, um, they realize a little late that they need to leave. And that's a key strategy you need to learn is when you need to leave. Because if you stick around too long, you're going to get punished, and you won't have as good of games. So look at this. I'm having a, just a great time. Look at this. I'm actually trying to bait him to shoot me. It's ranked. I'm trying to get him to shoot me so I can get some more experience. Get double chevrons, you know. Wargaming limited double chevrons to two players instead of three. And, yeah, that chevron system is just all, it's all wacko. I had a great time in this game. I just enjoy hold downs. I mean, it is it is what it is. But, um Prochetto. Like, seriously, man. Like, 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 if he left 30, 45 seconds ago when he knew I was coming this way, yes, he could have grouped up with the STRV or disappeared and prepped a, uh, to be a scout for the STRV so the STRV didn't have to get lit. Because trust me, this guy really tried. Like, our E100's, I think a one-shot, our, uh, our stir is a one shot. I'm uh, like a two if I high rolls, three if you if you regular. Our, our conk's pretty healthy, but you know he's gonna have to cross 300 meters of open ground. Keep that in mind. What is this map full of when you have to push? It's full of spots that are completely exposed. The two one two line. You win it. It's 100 one one to 200 meters open ground at certain points. 300 meters at others. What about the nine line? Same thing. If you win the nine line from the north, that's a massive push. Well, what about if you win the middle? Really? You're going to fight over... Okay, have fun. Do it. You, you're going to be dead. Yeah. And I, and I called that dude out. That dude has not moved all game. Granted, this game, he did really well. He did hot top damage on his, game, his team. He farmed the crap out of our Progetto. And he farmed the super conch. Because, you know, the super conch is crossing several hundred meters of open ground again. So, yeah. That was this game in a nutshell. This one wasn't as much fun. The Sturve game that we're going to watch here in a second. That one's got a little more strategy. That one's got a little more nuance. And a ton of luck. So, if you like lucky games and you're like, how? Why is he alive? Is he really that stupid? Why? Why is he doing... Get, hold hold on. Hold on. Just give me... Give me 13 more minutes of your time. And we're going to explore why Ranked is cancerous. So that that was this Karn game. That was uh, almost 7,000 damage. Had to carry that one. Finish that game up. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Alrighty. Here we go. STRV. Place your bets. I want you to place your bets. Put it in the comment section. What do you think is going to happen? Am I going to lose this one? Am I going to win this one? Kind of spoiled it already if you were listening at the beginning. But, you know, let's take a drink. We've got 12 seconds. Let's take a drink. A tasty beverage. We're going to need it for this one. This one's about to get a little sweaty. So if you haven't changed your clothes, I would go ahead and do it. Put some deodorant on. Get ready. Because by the end of this, you're going to smell like you've been outside all day working. I guarantee it because I, I changed my, my shirt after this. So here we go. Standard standard setup. I blew up the mini map a little bit so everyone can see it. Standard setup for a um, West uh, not Westfield. Sorry, gents. Actually, it is Westfield. I was right. Standard setup for Westfield and ranked. All the mediums come up to the hill. We fight over this CD line because if you win the top side, it's it's super easy just to push through. But um, we have, we have some issues at the start, um, but, you know, normal things. STRV accuracy for you right there. Just just one one hits, one misses. So you're going to see me this game just, like, flip and back and forth and back and forth. 
And that's what's important if you're an STV, this side of the map, doing this. You need to be rotating and looking for those shots because I've got to keep that, that 60 TP alive as long as I can. I, I, our 50B just said he really didn't want to win, and that's fine. I mean, he basically just gets eviscerated. Um, and so does our other heavy. I forget what he does. Like, they're just... They just didn't match... Uh, they match 50Bs up to Kronvons. Seriously? You're going to match a 50B to a Kronvon? Super conk. I understand. That's fine. Good turrets. Good pen. Good... So, oh, super conk's not that maneuverable. So neither is a Kron. So let's... Let's be real here. But... You can't put a 50B up against a Kron. That's just unacceptably stupid. But, you know, I don't get paid anything, and I'm just uh, a YouTuber with, like, 10 subscribers or something. No, no one watches these. It's okay. Um, I'm sure there's nothing in the comments any which way. <laughs> uh, I need to work on that. So, the game hasn't progressed much. We're down, what, 2K HP? Tied on tanks? Now, what I find very interesting is they actually sent mediums to flank the zero line. Look at the minimap. So in my head, I'm doing some calculations. I'm like, how long is it going to take for them to get a medium to E0? And I'm guessing we got another 30 seconds to a minute before it gets really challenging for us to even hold this. So I'm thinking, how can I get as much damage as I can right now? Because we're not winning. The, the, this game's a loss. It's a write-off. The 50B is... Ugh. Don't, don't even look at his HP. And um, the 60TB is doing his best to just live. Like, he is just desperately trying to keep their heads down. And uh, I gotta give him credit. This dude is... This dude's doing his job. I mean, he's not supposed to be spotting. He's supposed to be, you know, uh, exchanging blows with E100s. But, as you can see, two crowns versus a 50B and whatever else our heavy was... This was not a very balanced thing. All right, that leopard. So they're starting. They're starting to push the flanks. And uh, that FV man, this dude is luckier than I'll get up. Uh, I think I shoot here because I'm like, oh, I don't. Okay, good. I'm not an idiot. Um, after this match, I actually threw on a turbocharger instead of, uh, I think, camo net, because I'm an idiot. Also because I like going faster in siege mode. Also, I realized I was a little slow this game. I could have done better if I was a little bit faster. So I did change my, my setup. Uh, Rammer, Binos, uh, Turbocharger. And I, the, the T100 game, I have a really awesome setup and I'm going to love sharing with you guys. It was so much fun. I caught it from somebody else. It, it, it just makes the tank... It just makes the tank a joy to play. So what this... what um, The 60 TP is doing really well for me is getting these Krons to turn their turret when they come up. So that they're trying to get the angle on him, but I'm able to pop him in the side of the turret. So easy shot for me. So he's doing a great job trying to get them to turn for, for me so I can pop him. And this dude's probably getting all the um, spotting experience since I'm getting none of it. Now, I kind this is a longer one, so stick with me. So I'm, I'm sure you've put in the comment section, if anyone watched this, um, what you think is about to happen. And I'm going to give it... Um, it's about to come undone here in a second. Like, this this is the point where, in the battle, everything just starts unraveling. We're, um, we're about to get pushed on the zero line by a medium or two. And then when we do that, their heavy is pushed over top. So it, it's your box standard collapse. However, what precipitates it is I get my face pushed in. Because I get lit somehow. I'm most, mostly me being stupid. So you need to be careful. So when you're in this position, make sure your bushes are away. But you also have to remember when you're shooting, look where the other tanks were when they were lit. Is, do they have lines of sight to you? Ranked, honestly, if you're going to do it, um, pick the tanks that the bonuses are best at. And also look and see what maps there are. If the map rotation is Himmelsdorf and Ensk and... Minsk and uh, Kharkov. Yeah, yeah. Don't even try it. Just, just, just don't. Just don't even try STRVs. Grab your E3. Grab your V4. Go. Let's go have some fun. Let's go punch someone in the face and just keep uh, 
can wiggle yourself so you get bounced there. You get bounced. Um, so yeah, I mean, ton, tons of fun. This one's a slow burn, but it, once it happens, it all happens really quickly. So I'm trying to prep everyone for it. But overall ranked, um, if Warrior May ever listens to me, which, why should they? Um, go back to 15v15. It's a lot more fun that way. Yeah, it, it limits the selections, and it does limit, you know, some of the tactical decisions you can make. But I can play an EPR. I can play a light tank and actually get damage and, and, and expect my team to shoot what I like because there's enough of them to do it. Um, you know, and in already I can actually play an artillery piece and get stun damage because there's enough people. Where did that shot go? There's enough people to expect it to actually, you know, shoot it when 10 people are trying to get in position quickly and no one's left to shoot oh watch this this is just precious are you are you kidding me full first shot fully aimed and missed and i uh <laughs> crap move 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 run forest run i think someone hits me one more time yep yep Look at all those shots coming at me. Just look at them. Oh, look at this guy. This guy gets lit. He's like, "Oh, we've got this in the bag. I don't, I don't have to do anything." And then someone decides to, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you had it in the bag until you just threw your tank away. So yeah, this is this was just one of those where I just, I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to run. Like, um. This, me and this Pat are like going to do some awesome things in about five seconds. So you can already see the patent has got most of our HP. Um, I'm still trying to decide how I want to die because I know we're not winning this one. They've got Krons. They've got a grill that's full HP. That grill can push in and just shoot one tank and kill either me or the FE. Just, just doesn't even have to point. Just click near us and the shells will break our tank. Oh, well, what do you know? We pulled another one back. We're still down 700 HP. Uh, so, the other thing about ranked is you actually get to see parts of the map you normally don't get to see. I'm usually traveling through here just saying hi to Artie, just introducing him to our Lord and Savior, Armor Piercing Shell. Normal things, you know. Things that happen every game. That E100 is actually a huge pain. All right, look at this girl. Look at this girl. Look, 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 look at this. He he does kill. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Guess what he does afterwards. Granted, I don't know why they can't see me after I shoot. Uh, the girl must not have uh, uh, awesome um, you know, vision. But just just why? Why are you all this this stupid? Like this patent. I'm like, like dude, just like back them into me. Like I will farm them. Watch this. I fired that shell way too early. I admit it. That was terrible. This grill. This grill's bumping like it's like a go-kart in the middle of a freaking gravel road. This dude is just jumping and hopping all over the freaking place. Alright, now this is where it gets good. Because notice something. We have almost the exact same HP one tank. Me and the patent have enough HP between us to be one E100 that's left. Both of us, if we each average roll, which, <laughs> good luck with that, um, average roll, he's dead. Now the problem is, it's an E100, and you can do some stupid things with E100. You, you can just, you know, angle slightly and, and wiggle and just, you know, chew a shot. It, it's, it's not that difficult. It happens. Both of us can more or less be overmatched. That E100 just has to look at me and say, Hi, friend, and touch my tank. Just The shell just has to touch the tank. It'll 99% 90, of the time go through. Overmatched mechanics. Wonderful. The Patton, okay, legitimately, loads an HE shell. I mean... HE shells to either of us after the mechanic changes will kill us both. 
because it'll penetrate the screen on my front. And the pad he doesn't have enough H HP for that shell to <laughs> not to kill him instantly. Um, so my concern is, and this is where my thinking is, and I and I actually should have moved somewhere else. My thought process is, if this guy was intelligent, which he's a good player, I think. If I I can't look at his clan right now, I have something blocking it. But he's in a good clan. If he was smart, he would come down the one line to to get the maximum out of his speed and H and try and HE the patent as he rams himself into one of the buildings and then side scrape out and try and bait a shot and return fire. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, it's, it's got a low chance of success, but at this rate, the patent's capping. He's he's going to lose if he doesn't do something. And if he, if he dies losing, I mean, he dies losing. But how he approaches this, and kind of look and see what you think he'll do, kind of not the best idea. But, you know, uh, his game, um, I'm trying to tell the Pat. I think he's coming this way, I think he's coming this way. This Patton knew better than I did, which, you know, I gotta give it to him. Me and this Patton worked really well together, gave him a high five afterwards, told him great job. So yeah. Next one, I promise, not as long. Great scout game. Um, show you how to retreat scout. That's that's a necessary skill. If you're in a scout, you need to understand how to retreat scout. So next, next, next game, upload. T100 LT in a normal game, top tier. I think everyone will enjoy it because it is a great scouting, basically, tutorial for student ski for the um, one line side. So, Maddle's coming into it, and here is our E100 friend. Just look at this, look at this. Eh, you know. Thanks, Patton. Thanks for spotting. Had a great game. Great way to basically end ranked. That was uh, that's it for us, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you next time, and have a great day.